Hey, welcome to the final lesson of this section. We're just going to do a quick overview of everything that we've covered in the earlier lessons and just make a few notes. So in order to publish and execute your web app to a URL, you can go publish, deploy as web app and just give it a final version and using the executable value here. Uh, this is the where it's executing. So that's not going to change. Uh, just do a quick update of it and we'll render out the executable code. So now if I go to the executable page, I can see that it's rendering out whatever the code is on the client side. I'm going to simply comment out the alert because I don't really care too much for that alert popping up every time. Uh, and notice that even though I've changed it, it's not updating on the executable. So every time you update your code, you are going to have to uh, re update that code. So even if you've updated the HTML files and not the JS file, the GS file, it still needs to get uh, republished in order for those values to be able to see and to be rendered. So let's also set and try the temp. So let's uh, try temp about and it's still running that JavaScript there. So in order to get rid of that, we need to publish and republish this as a uh, new version or whatever we want to call it. Also, just make sure that you are naming it uh, appropriately so it does make sense in how you're naming it. Uh, if you do want a link from one page to the other, so let's say you have a little navigation menu here, you can link to the other pages, so href. Now we need to have the web URL to link to, so we can dynamically set that using the Google Apps script and set it using the script. We're going to do that right at the top here set a variable for the URL and just create a function called get script URL, which is going to run on the Google script side of things. So now let's go into the Google script and set the function for this. And what this function is going to do, it's going to return the web URL of the current web application. So creating the function get script URL and we're going to be returning back just whatever the URL is. So let's set a variable, equal it to URL, and taking the script app class, we're going to get the service, and the service is going to allow us to get the URL. That's going to return it back within a string format, and then we can simply just do a return of the URL. So this is effectively going to send to the client side the web URL of the current application. So whether it's on dev or executable, it doesn't matter. It will change depending on what URL we're looking for. And then just down here within the href, we're going to send the link and linking as target. So we need to set a target and the target is going to be top so that it goes over top of whatever the current page is and about and close off the hyperlink. And then within the target, we know with uh, the target, we need to equal it to temp and then whatever page we're looking for. And then just before this is we're going to have to set that URL. So using the Google script again, set whatever the URL value is or retrieve whatever the URL value is and then close that off. So now it's effectively going to return back the URL from the Google script side. And I did have this in uppercase and I do have this in lowercase. So let me make sure that it's consistent before we try it. So save, go out and refresh and try it. And now we can click the about and it brings us to the about page. And now on the about page, we're going to set that same option for the menu. And you can also even create a menu as well that uh, we can include. So that will make it a lot easier to navigate between the two of them. So how about we do that where we're going to create another HTML file and we'll just call this one the menu and we'll bring this file in and this is going to include the navigation menu for all the different pages that we have on our site and just going to separate them out with a dash and allow you to update them as needed. So index and this is going to be going to that index file. 
So unfortunately, within the include, as we've got it, we're creating an HTML, just regular HTML output from the file and getting the content. So including the URLs isn't going to work. So we need to find another way to do this. So let's create a function. And this is going to be just a custom menu function. And it's going to update the links within the menu and add whatever the prefix it with whatever the URL is. So this way we can actually take that URL function out of here and we can simply just copy and remove it and place that same URL function to fit within the menu function. And so we're just going to be calling this within one function. So the get script URL is returning the URL of the script. Let's construct our HTML. So using the same HTML service, we're going to create the output from a file and we're going to be using the static menu file. So that's the menu that we've created. So that will allow us to update the HTML without interfering and uh, updating any of the links. So we can update those links afterwards. So let's get the content for that. So that's going to get that whole page as HTML content. And then using uh, find and replace, so just a typical replace that we use with JavaScript, we're going to replace any instances of the question mark temp and we're going to prefix it with the URL. So any instances of question mark temp and look for all of those and we're going to replace those. So using a regular expression and in order to break out of the question mark, we need to do a backslash and then we can do a question mark and we want to do a global replace on all of them. So it's a regular expression. And now we can take the URL value and concatenate it with the question mark temp and then have that equal to whatever. So we're basically prefixing with the URL before we're returning the HTML object. So now if we do want that navigation menu, wherever we want the navigation menu, this is where we can include it. So just as we're doing the include function, we can include the menu function. So this is going to run the menu function and include that on the page wherever we want the menu function to appear. So if we want it in our about page, we can add that in as well. So let's refresh. And now we've got the index and the about. So let's click about, goes to the about page, goes back to the index page. And this way we've got the menu object and we can really easily update it and add additional pages. So if we want to link out to index two, we can update that and index two and so on. So we can really easily add pages. And then we can also apply our typical HTML styling as needed to our menu object. And now it's going to propagate across all of the pages that we have that menu where we're calling the menu and then we can click through and navigate through each one of the pages. So that's one way to add the menus across multiple pages. So now just a quick overview. So just with the include, we're creating a file from the HTML service. So that allowed us to include style sheets across multiple pages as well as JavaScript to multiple pages. And also keep in mind that these are still HTML. This is still HTML code that's being included in the pages. Uh, and then we also added a way to catch any errors. So we've got our try and catch in case we throw any errors from our HTML template and we're not able to output the content, we're going to simply just output whatever the object was that was passed in and stringify that error object. And I'm actually going to update this to another value to ERR so it's separate from the event object so we can still reference it if we need to. So that's it and that's how you can create multiple pages and then once you're complete, don't forget to redeploy it, give it a name for your project and then you can share it out and have the executable version uh, render out with the navigation menu. And this will work seamlessly and keep it within the executable and the developer will sit within the dev uh, web URL.